think we have found one of our best free campsites yet. Pretty sure. Oh my goodness. Good morning from the Angel Peak Scenic Area. There's a little campground back here. It's completely free. You can see on the map that we're kind of in the middle of nowhere. It was a wonderful surprise. I'm really glad we stayed here. Today we're not going to a national park. Instead, we're gonna to go to one of the oldest cities on this continent. Oh, we got all-wheel drive, so. Oh, man. I did not expect this. They said it was kind of a rough road, but I like it. Your destination is on the left. Visitor center is closed until 9 a.m. and it doesn't look like it's open anyway. It says to go online and pay for it online when you have service again, which we will do. Take the loop road to the past. You are approaching the great ruins of an ancient Indian fortified town, Pueblo Bonito. This huge structure was unearthed and preserved for posterity between 1920 and 1927 by seven expeditions of the National Geographic Society. Over 600 rooms towering four to five stories tall. That's crazy. Look at all the circular spaces. They're just so well preserved. think they were a little shorter back then? I'd like to think that they were shorter. I'm 5'2 for reference. This is a short one. Wow. This is more of a normal size room. It keeps going. You can see where the ceiling would have been. Mm -hmm. The next room above. What would the floor have been made out of? The same thing. So you've got the wood timbers. They would have gone across to make a floor, and then they would have put stone and mud and plaster over top of them. Just like the walls. That's all so they have. Short. A little short. Gives it a different feel, doesn't it? This is amazing. What I find most interesting about this room is the plastered walls. These walls were also covered in graffiti and art. It was here, they covered it up to protect it, but this is what the rooms would have looked like a thousand years ago. It's just crazy. I love the little windows. Just keeps going. Mm -hmm. The further you go back in the structure, the older the rooms get. And by older, I mean several hundred years. I'm amazed at how smooth the walls are. Wow. I'm happy to report that they take the preservation of this site very seriously. There's no graffiti, no one has written their names on the wall, there's no trash. It is very, very well preserved. Most native cultures use the resources that were available to them. That is forests, mud, 
Those wood buildings and everything has since decayed. Nothing is left. But in the southwest, they didn't have forests. They had stone and mud. And that is the only reason that these structures are still here is because they're made out of stone. Stone lasts over centuries and millenniums. They definitely used wood to build part of the structures. The doorways, the roofs, the floors, most of that wood had to be cut down from forest miles away, 30, 50 miles, and brought here to build. These structures were built over centuries, from about 800 AD up until about 1150 AD when it was abandoned. The majority of this complex was not used for housing. It was all part of a community center. This whole area is dotted with all of the ancient housing and then also roads connecting that all the way here to the Chaco Cultural Center. Any of the round rooms that you see, those are called kivas. Kivas were very significant to the culture. Those were all of the meeting rooms for ceremonies and just community gatherings in general. Not only did the Chaco people create this whole entire structure, but they did it in one of the harshest environments in the country. To help with the harsh environment, this entire structure was built near natural springs. There's still plenty more to see here. We are going to eat some breakfast and then take a hike to one more site. pretty amazing that they'll just let people kind of walk up to these structures. They do say don't touch the walls and stuff, but you can still get pretty close. Like there's nothing just stopping me from walking this close. They put too much trust in people. They should build a big glass box around it and just hope that it withstands another thousand years. I think this is the tiniest entrance yet. Ooh, and what would this have been? Oh my goodness. I wonder how many people see this opening and think, nah, I'll pass. You have to put into perspective of how old and significant these places are. This is North America's version of the pyramids. The pyramids in Mexico, Angkor Wat in Cambodia. This is the oldest structure in North America that we know of. Well, sign didn't tell the whole story, but this is gonna be where Richard Wetherill is buried. Richard Wetherill was the first to come and excavate this site. He was one of the best archeologists of his time. However, some of his practices were widely criticized. I believe because a lot of the artifacts that he did find, he sold. Some of them went to the museum, I'm sure they kept some of them, but he had a trading post here. So there was mixed controversy on whether what he was doing out here was good. In fact, he was killed by somebody out here after a dispute and he's buried here. Dang. But all the controversy surrounding him led to the Antiquities Act, which started the preservation of all of these sites. That includes national parks. Him and this site is the whole reason why any of these places are saved because of the controversy surrounding his activities. The more you know. How do you say this place? Chettle Kettle? This was built around 1100 and was still occupied for another 150 years before the whole place was abandoned. That's it? 150 years? Why was it abandoned? So this whole entire complex was actually sealed. I don't know if it was buried, but it was definitely purposely sealed and they think it was due to drought. So this whole place was purposely abandoned. We know how old all of these things are, not by the stone, but by the organic matter within the mortar and the wood. They can carbon date those types of things. And if plant matter in the mortar is a thousand years old, then it was placed there a thousand years ago. We want the Pueblo Alto Trailhead. This heat is no joke and I, uh. I had a pretty bad sunburn a couple weeks ago. My back was peeling, so I'm gonna try my best to avoid that. We no 
know where we're going this time? Uh, yeah. Somehow, we're gonna make it up there. We just have to figure out how to do it. It's 1.5 miles out and back. That's plenty in the heat for us today. I call it an adventure. This is the ancient trail that the natives used to take. How do you know that? Science said. Ooh. I don't know if I've ever seen a trail sign that said up. Where in the world do we get our clinton? How do we find this place? Almost at the top. That was awesome. Made it. It's totally worth coming up here. If I were to do it over again, I would do it first. Hike up here, get a good perspective of what you're about to walk through, and then go down and explore every single room and every building. They're all relatively close, so there's no reason why you can't see all of them. How is this place not more popular? Did you see the road to get in here? <laughs> that road was no worse than what we've done before. Crank that AC. What? The visitor center has water. We're gonna fill up. You saw the ruins, took you on a hike, showed you some petroglyphs. We now have a two hour drive to Albuquerque where we're gonna work for the weekend and then we're off to our next stop, which I'm not gonna reveal yet because we don't know what it is. I think we need to make an overland vehicle from an old UPS truck. because We have seen those things everywhere, on every road, going as fast as they could be, having a grand old time. Those things look like they're indestructible. Tonight would be perfect for a bonfire, but it's just not going to happen. There's way too many signs saying you can't do it, so we're not going to risk it. We are, however, going to make a classic Amber and Nathan meal, which consists of steak, instant potatoes, and a side Caesar salad. What does the gravy taste like? Garlic going in. Pan is really hot. Pretty yeah. good sear going. Not a bad attempt on the steak. It's obviously a lot of gravy, but I mean, we have nothing else to do with it, so we're gonna eat it. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Good job, honey. We still have salad. I almost forgot. Something healthy. We're now gonna make our way towards the Chaco Cultural, Chaco Culture. Hey, what's Chaco called? We have an hour and a half drive to the Chaco Culture Historical, 
and we have an hour and a half drive still to the Chaco Coulter Historical. This is so hard. Mark. We now have an hour and a half drive to the Chaco Coulter National Historical Park. It's quite the mouthful. This is one of those places where you're almost hesitant to make a video on it because I don't really want more people to know about it. I want you all to see it, but I don't want it to be destroyed. And more people means more destruction. It's just the way it is, sadly.